Hi, my name is Habiba, or Dr. Tanao to many. I'm an internist and primary care physician, among other things. That was me a few years ago. So before I share some clips of my life and how I ended up here, let's put some things into perspective and highlight the term burnout. Physician burnout, a psychological syndrome that can be expressed as a prolonged response due to chronic occupational stressors. Another definition is burnout is a long-term stress reaction marked by emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and a lack of sense of personal accomplishment. It's unfortunate, but there is this expectation that doctors are somehow like robots, conditioned to work long hours, ignoring fatigue and the emotional toll that the work takes on us. Depression and other mental health issues are very real amongst physicians. Did you know how many physicians commit suicide every year in the USA? Unfortunately, it's not always highlighted enough. I know it's a struggle, um, it's a challenge, um, it's not easy, and I wish patients realized how much work and dedication um, and how much we stress over their lives and their um, medical concerns and how much it takes a toll on us emotionally. Um, and I can only talk for myself, it is really hard at times. Um, Sitting on my desk, I just want to go to bed. I just want to go to bed. I have a cold. This is some bullshit. <laughs> this is some real bullshit. Excuse my French. But uh, doctors get sick too. And uh, it's, it's not fun. Because I still have to work. Um, Anyway, I'm going to try to finish my work on my desk early. Mariam has a school trip tomorrow. Um, and you know what? This whole medicine thing, it's, sometimes it makes you wonder. It really does. Uh, really makes you wonder. It's, it's tough. It really is tough.
stitch to go. And don't mind my ashy, messy hands and nails. <laughs> had a long day at work, y'all. Had a long day at work, so this kind of helps relax me. So anyway, next time you see this dress, it should be on Miss Little Khadija. Wow, today I had the worst day, the worst day, in terms of being physically and emotionally exhausted. Let me tell you, man, this medical life, medicine is no freaking joke. And anyone who thinks doctors are paid too much money, you can go screw yourself because I don't think so. If you were, if you would walk in our shoes, you would realize Anyway, I'll have to get back to you because it is 9.29. I am just getting back and I gotta check in with Ken and I'll come back, okay? Hold on. All right, I'm back. I just finished talking to my husband, but I'm really just trying to find that wusai, you know, that zen, you know, because you can't be on 10 all the time. And you guys see me here on uh, YouTube when I'm doing sort of uh, fun things and you know doing things that I totally enjoy that for me doesn't require too much energy or brain power uh, I am a very creative person naturally but it, it, it comes easy for me and I'm not saying this to show off I'm just saying that there are certain things that are very easy for me and I find relaxing okay medicine is not that medicine requires all your brain functions you're like on 10 for many of us and today was just one of those days so let me just keep it short I'm just gonna try to condense what I just went through right now so basically um, without telling you where I work you don't need to know where I work you just know that I work in medicine and I take care of patients and I take care of people and a lot of my patients are geriatric or seniors and a lot of them have like five six medical problems at a time so it's always real uh, refreshing when I meet a patient who is like in their 20s or in their 30s or in their 40s because to me that's young for the patients but anyway so I started off um, tired because I really didn't get a lot of sleep because usually Sundays are the worst so I come in I'm already kind of tired but I have to come in and I have a panel of patients that I have to see that are set at a particular time and these patients come on time and guess what I was starting a little late so I already felt behind so I'm tired and behind and so anyway by like 10 30 I catch up and I'm seeing everyone at the time that they're scheduled to see boom 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 so I have a busy morning come 12 o'clock I think I'm done gonna go to lunch because I try to get one hour's lunch because I have to drive back to the apartment well I don't have to I could easily stop and get fast food or go to a restaurant but I choose not to I choose to try to be really healthy when I'm working and I come home and I get myself something quick to eat because I don't live too far from where I work so anyway 12 o'clock here come the nurse with a patient like oh you know this patient's been sitting there for hours waiting 
Mind you, this patient is not scheduled to be seen. This patient walked in, so there they know they have to wait. And secondly, this is not even someone that I know. This is not a patient that I was taking care of previously, so it's not. it had nothing to do with me. It wasn't my fault in any kind of way. But she's giving me this whole guilt, this patient, da-da-da-da. Bottom line is, I don't go to lunch. I end up staying to see this patient. So now that puts me at 12.30, and so... Um, I leave and I go to lunch and I'm like I should go to lunch and be home for 15 minutes makes no sense I'm gonna take my lunch. So I come back. It's 1 30. Okay now I have two people waiting for me the 1 o'clock and the 1 30 So I don't know. I was just so tired and already aggravated and so I tried to be super efficient and I saw everyone and I saw everyone when you know on time but but at the end of the day, you know, I try to, what you do, anyway, I'm not making that much sense right now, but bottom line is you see a patient, you write notes, you put in orders, they need certain medications, they may need certain services, um, so you have to order that, but you still have to go back and finish your note, right, so that it can be billed, so that the clinic or hospital can, you know, get paid for the services that you've just done. So I have to stay and finish all my notes. Well, it just took forever. I don't know why it just felt like today it just took forever. Uh, so I'm there late. And then besides your regular work, you have charts or messages that come in, things that come in, patients write, you know, for certain requests or they have lab work that you need to go over. So instead of leaving maybe at five, like maybe what you think most doctors or most professionals leave, I'm there till six, seven, 8.30 p.m. 8.30 p.m. I'm like, I, I gotta go. I really gotta go. So I run down the stairs to leave to go down into you know go to my car you have to go down the stairs and um doors and double doors whatever and as i go down into the stairway i realize the freaking alarm is on like somehow i set off the alarm before even getting out of the building just by being in the stairwell because the darn cleaning lady has locked put on the alarm and left while i was still in the building and i had told her like literally about a week ago, I said, hey, you know, there are times where I might work late. So please just come by and check to make sure I'm there before you leave and before you go setting the alarm on. Well, I guess today she didn't do that. So I come out and I'm kind of, you just feel your heart. You start feeling this panicky because this is a new place for me. This is not, you know, somewhere I've worked forever. This has never happened before. So I'm like freaking out. Maybe I should call someone. But the thing is, my phone does not work. You don't get a signal in this area. So I would have to be outside. So I'm like thinking, can I get out? Will I be able to get out through the doors with the alarm? So I was like, man, screw this. Just push the door in. Just go. So I push the door. The alarm is still going. The door opens. I leave. So I see my car and I'm like, okay, just go. Just go home. Or as you're work, walking, you know, maybe um, you're going to call someone. So anyway, I'm like thinking, who am I supposed to call? I don't really want to bother anyone. And then I see a car in the parking lot. And I'm like, oh, the cleaning lady is still here. She's going to turn off the alarm. No problem. There's her car over there. That's what I thought. That's her car. So I get in my car to drive. And lo and behold, the gates are closed because they are serious about alarm and security in this place. So I'm like, fuck, the gates are closed. And at first I was like, what the fuck? What should I do? I'm kind of panicking. But then I see a sheriff's car outside the gates. And I'm not sure whether I should be relieved, but I'm cautious. And this guy's got like guns, big heavy gear, big tall guy. And, you know, he don't know me. I don't know him. You know, I'm a female in this big-ass place. It's dark. Just keep that in mind. It's dark. There's nobody here. Just that sheriff's car and me at the gate. So then, of course, he comes towards me. He comes through. And, you know, of course, he's going to ask some questions. And I'm trying to explain myself like, hey, I work here. You know, obviously, somebody locks me in. The cleaning lady locks me in. And I just tell him what happened. And he's like, do you have a supervisor? Why don't you call her? So 
you know, I'm all flustered, trying to find my phone in my bag. I got this sheriff looking at me. I'm not sure if he believes me, but he better. Um, but anyway, I finally call her and she has to come and I feel bad that she has to come and open the door or not open the door, but turn off the alarm because again, I'm new here. I don't have the code and she felt better coming instead of giving me the code. I understand. So anyway, the, the sheriff is like looking at me and he's like, Hey, have you seen the security for this building? They're really serious and gun ho. I was like, no, I haven't met them. Sure enough, right after my supervisor comes, then of course here's the sheriff. Then here's another vehicle that shows up and apparently it's the security for the building. And, uh, he shows up and he looks like a menacing, scary-ish type of older white guy. Okay. So I know I need to like, mm, be relaxed, be calm. Don't give him any reason to be like, you know, go off or you know what I mean? Um, so I have my badge on so I like make sure I have my badge on because when I was leaving I took it off But something just said as I got out the building put your badge and ID on so I put it on So I had it on and again, he's all looking at me suspicious like he don't believe what I'm saying I'm like I work here and I was working late and I got locked in and the alarm when I went through the door a stairwell went off so anyway finally short story Everybody realizes I'm telling the truth. Everything's going to be okay. The alarm gets turned off and gets reset. So eventually, hopefully, I will get the right code so that I can do this myself if this happens again. But, you know, when you know the saying, when it rains, it pours. I'm already feeling like jittery. I'm tired. I'm nervous feeling. I, I, I'm super tired. And so I drive home. I get home. I'm so tired. There's no parking. There's no parking in the apartment complex where I normally park. I can't find any parking. So I have to drive way down. I park. I park. I come out. I walk. I know that I have to walk a while to get to my apartment. But guess what? Your girl was so tired that I walked out and went upstairs into somebody else's apartment. Are you serious? Let me tell you, that's how tired I was. I literally, the complexes look all the same. I literally walked into another building. I get up there and I'm like, why is there a doormat at my door? I don't have a doormat at my door and I don't have a doormat at my door because I don't want nobody to know that I live there, right? Because I don't, why would I want anybody in a place where I'm not from to know that somebody lives there or who lives there? So I get back out. And now I found my way into my darn apartment. Ah, <sighs> flowers and all. So that's dinner. It's really late. I shouldn't be eating this late, but it is what it is. So again, to those who think doctors make too much money, screw you. We don't. We really don't. We really, really don't. And definitely not in primary care. We really don't. I mean, honestly, when I'm with a patient, and I'm taking care of them, I feel like I do go above and beyond because I want to take care of them to the best of my ability. I take care of them like I would take care of family. And it's, it's not so much about the money. It really isn't. But at the end of the day, I always know that I'm doing more than I should and I'm spending more time with them than maybe most people do because I'm always feeling like I have to be able to rest at night. I have to know that I did my best. But... Honestly, sometimes with the level of stress that it entails and the amount of work, there's no amount of money that's worth this kind of, this kind of stress. Um, but you do what you have to do. I, 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 I love knowing that I am somehow making an impact um, and taking care of people um, and giving them the best care I can. Uh, but that's why I have to take breaks. I'm, I'm just not like maybe most doctors and i'm not saying this because i'm so special no there's nothing special about me all it is is that i feel like i've decided to take control of my life and not necessarily do what everybody else expects yes i can be a doctor but i can also be a creative i can be an artist i can be a speaker i can be uh you know a home chef 
I can make YouTube videos because that's what I want to do. That's what I enjoy doing and nothing says I need to do medicine 24 seven for the rest of my life. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. I got to take some creative breaks from it, but right now this is the time for me to work so i'm just venting to you y'all i'm just venting to you i'm not saying like oh i want to give this up i'm just venting um and hopefully tomorrow will be a better day hopefully so anyway good night i'm gonna watch some youtube so i can just bring it down a notch and just you know watch something maybe even brainless so i can just laugh a little bit because Honestly, what is life if we're not laughing, laughing sometimes, right? What is life if you can't smile, if you can't enjoy something, if you can't find the lightness? Um, what is life? It's not meant to be just about work, 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 work and kill yourself. No, ma'am. Anyway, good night. I've said enough.